Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer of this webinar for giving me the opportunity to share the outputs of our five-year study on immunization regimen in Asian sea boss, broodfish, which I believe a practical strategy to control vertical transmission of nervous necrosis virus during seed production. So to start with, I am pretty sure that everybody is aware of the fact that over the past decades, intensification of aquaculture in Asia has led to remarkable improve improvements in productivity. This is evidenced by the enormous diversity of fish species being farmed. However, with the advent of high-density aquaculture, the occurrence of diseases has become a major impediment in production, development, and expansion of the aquaculture industry. Unwarranted disease outbreaks have by far been plausibly attributed to the fact that most farms produce different species of fish at the same site. Thrust fish uh, that is identified as potential carriers of bacterial and viral pathogens has been widely used as feed, particularly for carnivorous fish species. Then fry and fingerlings, which may also be carrying the pathogens, are often caught in the wild. Culture techniques per species have not yet been fully established and that legislation and implementation, especially for farming license and zoning policy are not in place in most ASEAN member states. So how do we control the occurrence of diseases? Some practical and scientifically sound approaches include the use of specific pathogen-free broodstock, optimization of feed, improvement of husbandry techniques, good sanitation, and I highlighted in here immunization or vaccination. Why is this so? Because vaccination has by far been considered as an indispensable tool for disease control. And this is also due to the fact that vaccination has been recognized as the most appropriate method for disease control, provides long-lasting protection, leaves no adverse residues in the product or environment, and has been proven to be cost-effective. So this slide shows the major viral diseases of economically important tropical fishes commonly cultured in brackish or marine waters. These diseases include viral nervous necrosis, lymphocystis disease, Red Seabrim Iridovirus Disease, Grouper Iridovirus Disease of Taiwan, Grouper Iridovirus Disease, and Infectious Spleen and Kidney ne Necrosis Virus Disease. And I highlighted in here viral nervous necrosis because this is the, the main, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the meat of my presentation today. So, viral nervous necrosis is also referred to as viral encephalopathy and retinopathy. This disease is popularly known as VER in Europe and has been reported in more than 120 cultured or wild marine and freshwater fish species and has caused serious economic losses among farmed marine fishes in the past decades. The disease occurs mostly at the larval stage of fish causing mass mortality. Affected fish exhibits an array of neuropathological signs, including loss of appetite, dark coloration of the skin, lethargy, and abnormal swimming behavior. However, I would like to also inform everyone that older juvenile to sub-adult fish can also experience disease and mortality. So the lesions induced by nervous necrosis virus are characterized as vacuolations and necrosis of the brain in the spinal cord and even in the retina of uh, the eye of uh, the fish. So we employ different specific methods to detect the virus in fish, including molecular like uh, techniques like, uh, uh, like um, RT-PCR or reverse transcriptase uh, polymerase chain reaction. We can also employ real-time PCR histopathological technique like routine HNE staining technique and serological techniques such as immunofluorescent antibody technique. 
So the causative agent of this disease belongs to the family Nudaviridae of the genus Beta Nudavirus, which is Apici Nudavirus. As what I have just said, uh, this, the causative agent of this disease is neuropathogenic in nature, which means that the virus has predilection for the nervous tissues or neurons of uh, the brain and as well as the spinal cord and the retina of uh, the eye of uh, the fish. The genome of uh, beta the virus is composed of two positive cells, single-stranded RNA. Uh, RNA1 uh, encodes uh, an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, catalyzing the replication of the virus. And RNA2 encodes the capsid protein. Uh, this is approximately uh, 37 kilodalton, which may induce cell death. beta the viruses are non-enveloped, icosahedral in shape, uh, we uh, measures 25 to 30 nanometers in uh, diameter. So based on RNA2 sequences, that's the capsid pro uh, protein, um, beta the viruses are classified into four major genotypes, namely stripe jack nervous necrosis virus type, tiger puffer nervous necrosis virus type, red spotted grouper nervous necrosis virus type, in the barfin flounder nervous necrosis virus type. Beta the viruses isolated from warm water marine fishes have been classified as RGNNV type, while those isolated from, um, from uh, cold water fishes have been identified as the BFNNV type, suggesting that water temperature plays an important factor in the virulence of beta nudoviruses. So beta nudoviruses can be divided into three serotypes. We have here in A, B, and C by seroneutralization assay using polyclonal antibodies. And the zero group grouping is in part consistent with their genotypes. That is serotype A for SJNNV, serotype B for TPNNV, and serotype C for RGNNV and BFNNV. So this slide shows some vaccination studies against BNN in high volume marine fish species in Asia. For instance, our group was able to um, demonstrate the efficacy of the formalin inactivated vaccine that we developed in uh, Pompano juveniles. In this case, we obtained an RPS or relative percent survival rates of ranging from 90 to 100 percent. We were also able to demonstrate the efficacy of the inactivated vaccine that we developed in grouper juveniles. And uh, we were able to obtain uh, RPS uh, values ranging from 86 to 100 percent. Let's move on to the prevention of VNN in hatcheries. So prevention of VNN may only be plausibly achieved in farm fish population through avoidance of exposure to beta nudovirus or the nudovirus. Although seemingly difficult to implement in grow-out facilities, such method may be applicable in hatcheries that strictly adhere to utilizing nervous necrosis virus-free water and nervous necrosis virus-free larvae or juveniles obtained only from nervous necrosis virus-free broodstocks. So protocols including you know, the screening of eggs or milks for NNV prior to uh, induced spawning, chemical disinfection uh, of eggs and larvae, and adherence to general husbandry practices have by far been proven effective in controlling the vertical transmission of nervous necrosis virus, that is from parent to offspring. However, we still encounter unpredictable outbreaks of VNN in high-value marine fish species at the larval and post-larval stages in hatcheries. And this could be plausibly attributed to the fact that nervous necrosis virus-negative broodstocks can still be infected by nervous necrosis virus via ingestion of contaminated water and feed, for example, grass fish. Broodstocks obtained from the wild though negative for VNN detection by RT-PCR, may be carriers of nervous necrosis virus. So we believe that the only solution to address this problem is to produce 
nervous necrosis virus resistant broodstocks through the establishment of a vaccination regimen. Because if we have VNN free broodstocks, we will also produce VNN free offspring. So this slide shows the, the uh, result of uh, a previous study that we conducted in Grouper. We previously demonstrated that an effective anamnestic response would arise when immunized groupers, just like in here, shown in here, were challenged with the homologous nervous necrosis virus as evidenced by remarkable or abrupt increases in nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibody titers, as shown here, up to six folds or higher in challenged fish, which means that after we vaccinated the fish and challenged the fish with the homologous virus, there was an abrupt increase in the level of neutralizing antibody in the serum of individual fish. This data actually served as springboard in conceptualizing our novel and practical strategy of producing immunocompetent, that is, nervous necrosis virus specific free sea bass broodfish that could be sustainably maintained in land-based tanks as an attempt to feasibly control the vertical transmission of nervous necrosis virus during seed production. So we initially vaccinated CBOS with a mean body weight of 5 grams via intraperitoneal injection with an activated nervous necrosis virus. So just after one month, okay, we, the mean neutralizing antibody titer of 1 is to 2,560 was detected in the sera of 5 fish sampled as shown here at month 1 post-primary immunization. So this, the, the antibody titers in the sera of fish picked at month two, the mean that we obtained here was one is to 4,480 and thereafter decreased to significantly lower levels as shown in this figure, such that at month 12, we only obtained a titer of a mean neutralizing antibody titer of one is to 260 post-primary immunization. On the contrary, as shown in this figure, none of the control fish examined or unvaccinated fish or an immunized fish in the first year of our immunization experiment demonstrated neutralizing antibodies. And the lower, lowest limit that we set for this was 1 is to 40. So when the immunized fish were given booster immunization at month 12, if you can recall here, we did, we booster immunized the fish when the neutralizing antibody titers in the zero of this fish dropped significantly to a very, very low level. So we did the booster immunization and this is what we got. So when the immunized fish were given booster immunization at month 12 post-primary immunization, nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibodies abruptly increased to about 1 is to 12,800. And this level was apparently maintained until month 3. But again, thereafter, the titers gradually declined and significantly dropped to a significantly low level the mean that we obtained here at month 12 was 1 is to 480. And this was done, this, the data that we obtained during the first booster immunization. This was already the second year of our study. Because a similar trend was noted in the kinetics of nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibody titer production. The annual booster immunization of fish were correspondingly done at the last month, month 12 of year 2. This was already the, the, the second booster immunization. And year 3, until year, this was already the year 4, so this was the, the third booster immunization because we, we found out that here at month 12, post-second booster immunization, the neutralizing antibody titers in the sera of vaccinated fish significantly dropped to also to a very low level. So, in the fourth year of our immunization regimen experiment, 
at this time, the age of the fish were uh, more than three years old. Both three-year-old immunized and, in, and unimmunized sea bass have already become sexually mature. Hence, we conducted the successive induced spawning at months seven and eight post third booster immunization respectively, which means that the age of the fish when they were found to be already sexually mature was three years and seven months. That's the time when we did the, the first booster, in the, the first induced spawning. And the succeeding month, when the age of the brood stack that we subjected to induced spawning, uh, where uh, the, the, the age was uh, three years and eight months, or 3.8 um, years old. So this was the protocol that we followed. So we collected all the brood stocks in this because we reared the, the fish in a very big tank. So we, we collected them, uh, we anesthetized the fish, and then all the brood stocks were subjected to um, tissue biopsy. We cannulated the milk or the, the egg or from the gonad of uh, the fish in here. And then, um, the, then we... we we the, we subjected the the milk or the milks or, or the eggs that we collected to RT PCR, especially for the potential candidates that uh, we subjected to induced spawning. We weighed the fish. I collected blood from the caudal vein of the fish before the potential candidate uh, was injected with the luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone at 100 microgram per kilogram body weight. So as what I've just said, after we injected the, the, prior to the injection of the hormone, we collected the milk and the eggs and, uh, and subjected to RT-PCR. We also collected the serum or the blood and separated the serum from individual fish and also subjected to an uh, uh, neutralizing antibody titer. And even the spawned eggs from both vaccinated and unvaccinated fish, we also subjected to NNV neutralizing antibody titer determination. Then we allowed the fish, because we did not return the fish to the holding tank, the, that big rearing tank, but instead we maintained them. We just uh, continued rearing them in that circular tank where we conducted the induced spawning, and we allowed them to stay there for one month, and then subjected them again to another round of uh, induced spawning following the protocol that we previously employed during the first induced spawning. And what's the purpose why we did this? Our objective here was to determine the effect of stress inflicted by successive induced spawning on the replication of nervous necrosis virus in the gonads of the breeders, whether stress can really uh, bring about the upregulation of the virus replication in the gonads of the uh, infected fish. So this table shows the detection of nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibody titer in the sera, a nervous necrosis virus in the milts, that is in the case of males, and eggs, in the case of females, of three and four-year-old immunized and unimmunized Asian sebas collected before the two successive induced spawning. So as shown here in table one, nervous necrosis virus was not detected in the milts and eggs of immunized SIBAS possessing nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibodies tested during the first induced spawning. So the male um, SIBAS at the mean um, neutralizing antibody titer of 1 is to 3,162. And we were also able to detect the presence of neutralizing antibodies in the two female broodstocks that we uh, subjected to induced spawning. On the contrary, one male, as shown here, one male, and both female and immunized CBAS respectively, were found positive for nervous necrosis virus by nested RT-PCR, suggesting that they have been naturally infected 
with nervous necrosis virus during the duration of our experiment. So, when this same fish were subjected to another round of induced spawning one month later, as shown here, one of the female unimmunized sebas became one step from here. One from here became one step, okay? Became one, one step RT-PCR uh, positive. And on the other hand, the two, one male and two female CBAS remained nested RT-PCR positive. Additionally, seronutralization assay of sera from both male and female unimmunized CBAS surprisingly revealed, as shown here, the presence of low levels of neutralizing antibody titers respectively. So in the succeeding year, year following the same protocol previously applied in year four or in three-year-old Seabass uh, um, broodfish, sexually mature four-year-old females, two here, and um, two males immunized Seabass broodfish were likewise subjected to induced spawning. None of the milk and egg samples collected from immunized fish prior to induced spawning were found positive for nervous necrosis virus by RT-PCR. In the case of an immunized um, fish, one of the female CBAS was found to be persistently positive for nervous necrosis virus by nested RT-PCR during the first and the second induced spawning. So, we further attempted to examine the presence of nervous necrosis virus by nested RT-PCR in both batches of spawned eggs obtained from both three-year-old immunized and immunized here and unimmunized, the control uh, here, uh, CBAS broodfish during the first and the second uh, induced spawning, which we conducted in the year four of our experiment when the age of the fish were 3.7 uh, years old or 3 years and 7 months old and in the succeeding month, of course, 3 years and 8 months old. And this was done during the post-third booster immunization. And in the case, of course, of control fish, we use uh, L15 uh, as um, we injected the uh, control fish with L15. So all spawned eggs obtained from three-year-old immunized fish were consistently negative for VNN for the detection of nervous necrosis virus by nested step RT-PCR. On the contrary, nervous necrosis virus was persistently detected in the spawned eggs of an immunized fish and this became one step RT-PCR positive during the subsequent induced spawning conducted at month 8 post-third post -third L15 injection. So current results indicate that our immunization regimen in CBAS based in land-based tanks is a pragmatic and effective approach of preventing the vertical transmission of nervous necrosis virus in CBAS under stress brought about by repeated induced spawning. Additionally, it is worth noting that in the succeeding year of our induced spawning experiment, in both immunized and unimmunized broodfish, our results, results showed a similar, similar trend where a nervous necrosis virus was only detected in spawned eggs coming from an immunized fish, but not from immunized fish. This table shows the detection or the results of the zero neutralization assay conducted on spawned eggs obtained from both immunized, here, immunized, and unimmunized CBAS. 
Our induced spawning experiments conducted on three and four-year-old Sibas broodfish revealed the presence of neutralizing antibody titers in the spawned eggs only of immunized fish, as shown here. Immunized broodfish indicating that the vaccine-induced maternal antibodies have been vertically transmitted to the eggs. This information likewise concomitantly support the negative result of the nervous necrosis virus detection in the spawned eggs from immunized fish, which I previously presented. In contrast, the spawned eggs obtained from an immunized broodfish were all negative for the presence of neutralizing antibodies as shown here by the value that is less than 1 is to 40. So, in summary, intraperitoneally immunized fish reduced neutralizing antibodies as early as one month, picked at two months, but markedly dropped at 12 months post-primary or booster immunization. So, therefore, we believe that the timing of booster immunization should be done approximately at month 12 post primary or booster immunization. So nervous necrosis virus was only detected in milts and eggs of an immunized broodfish by RT-PCR. Moreover, nervous necrosis virus was only detected in spawned eggs of an immunized broodfish. And that nervous necrosis virus neutralizing antibodies were only detected in spawned eggs of immunized broodfish. But I would like to also inform everyone that uh, while larvae produced by immunized seabass immunized breedfish the, uh, were successfully bred to be nervous necrosis virus negative until the juvenile stage, the rearing of larvae from an immunized seabass broodfish were not pursued. We did not pursue, but instead we terminated. Uh, the experiment because aside from the fact that they became one step unnested RT-PCR positive, some batches of post larvae even succumbed to nervous necrosis virus infection. Thus, in or in conclusion, annual immunization regimen with the inactivated nervous necrosis virus vaccine is an eff efficient method of sustaining nervous necrosis virus specific free sea bus broodfish reared in land-based tanks and that this approach can circumvent the risk of vertical transmission of nervous necrosis virus from asymptomatic broodfish to their offspring and the under stress of repetitive spawning. However, the nervous necrosis virus specific free status of the CBUS offspring is not heritable. This is because of the fact that protection conferred by the maternal antibodies in the offspring is transient or can it's only for a certain period of time in that spawned eggs from immunized CBUS broodfish should therefore be subsequently cultured in a biosecure facility that is free from infectious nervous necrosis virus until they are immunocompetent enough to be immunized via intraperitoneal injection, usually at the juvenile stage when they attain or when a fish attains a mean body weight of approximately 3 to 5 grams. And we believe that the application of immunization regimen to other equally VNN susceptible warm water marine fish species warrants further investigation. So I guess that ends my presentation today. I would like to acknowledge the government of Japan Trust Fund 6 for funding the study, CIFDIC AQD, BioLab staff, FISHELT staff, and IMS staff. Thank you very much.